Okay, now I think we're going to head into our next segment where you're going to tell us how we can make shelling a family activity or just a personal individual solitary activity and what are the basic tips for successful shelling on Sanibel? Well, like everything, you have to have the tools of the trade, Drew. So there are some important tools of the trade for shelling and if you help me get this bag open, we'll take a look at those. Um, first and foremost is something on your feet um, so that um, you'll notice I have some, some something on my feet. Um, and that's so that if there are broken shells that you're not injured by stepping on something. Um, sometimes I wear something a little bit different like a, a water aerobics shoe. So it's what you're comfortable with. My second most important tool after the sunscreen is, um, is a net. Um, there are a couple of reasons. You can scoop down and get things without bending over. You've probably heard of the Sanibel stoop. And that's because they say all of us in our older age are going to be uh, kind of stooped over from all the days we spend on the beach. Also, when you're shelling in that first foot or so of water and looking back towards the shore, you can use this to trap shells that are rolling out. So we have shellfish stories, just like people fishermen have fish stories about the genonia that got away. So next important tool. Also, I like to use um, a metal sieve of some kind. And what I do is I scoop up the, what I call the grit. So those little teeny pieces that you see right in the, um, in the, uh, the low tide mark right then or, or even like that because you'd be amazed at what you can find in there. So I take that and I put a little water in it, I shake it around and it makes it um, quicker and easier to find. Sometimes I take my scoop down to that area and I just scoop and then dump it on the beach and it makes it a little bit easier to find some of those smaller shells. Yes. I also um, have a mask and a snorkel, not a must, but if you're comfortable snorkeling, it's great to wait until the very lowest tide and then go out as far as you're comfortable going and do some snorkeling. Um, you may find some live things that of course we can't take from the beach, but you also will find some very nice shells that haven't been damaged by being um, sort of um, blown in um, and, and, and um, maybe broken by the waves as they come in. I know you're going to look at me funny when I get out this one, but um, some sort of a digging tool that you would use in the garden. Um, the reason is a lot of times, believe it or not, we will have piles of shells on Sanibel that might be this high. And the best way to get through them is to kind of use something, either um, some sort of a little shovel or a wake um, to dig down. Also, um, <laughs> mollusks leave trails. And so in, on the low tide, especially in the tidal pools, if you see a trail, you might use that to dig down to look at the live animal without harming it. Um, so that would be another um, another use for that. Also, I um, have containers in my bag, so when I find special shells that I don't want to become broken or I want to be sure I don't lose, I might put them in containers. And you can start saving things, oatmeal boxes or, or butter dishes or um, buy little plastic snap um, containers. And those are useful as you start to save things in your collection as well. And then the ever important sharp tools. Uh, and the uh, suntan lotion that spills, obviously. Um, these tools are used um, in the cleaning of shells. Uh, but I bring them down to the beach with me because sometimes when I find <clears throat> a dead animal, I may want to go in and um, pry out that dead animal now rather than taking it back to my room and having to deal with that odor attached to the, um, to the dead animal. So I try to get rid of as much debris as I can while I'm still on the beach. Very good. Um, also, you need some sort of a mesh bag, something like this, um, that you can tie. Um, we'd prefer people not use plastic on the beach. There are so many animals that can be harmed by that plastic um, inadvertently blowing into the water. 